Welcome to New Zealand's Deep South. This is one of the most scenic and mountainous regions of the South Island. And for the past 56 years, a small army of elite cycling teams have descended on Invercargill to compete in one of the biggest and toughest events on the New Zealand cycle racing calendar. Over the course of seven exciting stages, the assembled teams will face everything the roads, terrain and weather of the region can throw at them. At the end of the week, the best cyclists will take home the titles and the jerseys money can't buy. This is the 2013 SBS Bank Tour of Southland. Each stage of this race will be, in, in its own, an epic because there's no soft stages in this year's edition of the Tour of Southland. The teams will be trying to maximise the climbers in, in the race because it is definitely a climbers race this year. You've got stages up Bluff, Black Mount and now Coronet and it will be a climber that can survive the bits in between those climbs that can potentially win this race. We could see a, a, a winner of this race who is someone that you haven't thought of before the start. The race for the yellow jersey started yesterday with the team's time trial prologue, a short sharp four kilometre punch around Queen's Park right in the heart of Invercargill. The weather gods smiled on the peloton as beautiful, clear and calm conditions greeted the field for the race's opening. A big crowd descended on Queen's Park for the annual family day that traditionally starts the event. A ride through the park, the official team's presentations and plenty of fun giveaways for the kids started the action. But the real drama began when the first of our teams left the start line. Team Old Timo had the honour of first team away and each of the 15 teams followed at two minute intervals, including the popular local combination of H&J's outdoor world of Vanti Plus. Headlined by New Zealand track representative Cameron Kowalski and junior world track medalist Liam Aitchison. The youthful trans-Tasman combo from South Shore Insurance with Australians Craig Evers, Craig Hutton and Matt King. And newly sponsored Pure South Alliance Group, the most international of this year's lineup, led by reigning world individual pursuit bronze medalist Stefan Kung from Switzerland. Powernet, featuring former national road champion James Williamson and former tour stage winner Roman Van Newton, roared home to complete the 4.2 kilometre circuit in 4 minutes 48 to put Paul Odlin into the Jesco Hydraulics King of the Mountain jersey. Kiwi Velo Armstrong Prestige, including Harcourt sprint ace James Oram and last year's champion Mike Norby, claimed second overall in 4 minutes 46. But in the end, opening day honours went to Huon Salmon Genesis Wealth Advisors by a wafer-thin margin, just four one-hundredths of a second, to put team leader Joe Cooper into the first yellow jersey of the 2013 SBS Bank Tour of Southland. Day one, a very exciting stage ahead, I think. The weather looks like it's going to be not too bad for us. Uh, I think you're going to see some very good team riding until the riders and the team sort themselves out. But uh, going across through East and South, and I think there's going to be some powerful riding up front. And to watch out for the tough guys to stir things along and see what the reaction is. I've been coming down here for a long time now, and uh, it's my first day in yellow, and uh, yeah, it means a lot to me. So. Everyone's got boys in form sort of thing, and yeah, everyone seems to always be stepping up this time of year, so it makes it for a good hard race, yeah. The weather at this stage looks pretty good. Uh, we've said that before, but um, just fingers crossed that everything's going to be OK. But again, it is the Tour of South and we'll take what's given to us. Stage one of the SBS Bank Tour of Southland takes the teams into Eastern Southland. This is an area rich in character and scenery with a colourful history of gold rushes and moonshine whisky. It's now known for its trout fishing, agriculture and its outstanding museums, galleries and music festivals. The best that rural Southland has to offer. Stage one is a very, very tough stage to start this race with. It's very unpredictable, there are lots of crosswinds, there's lots of climbs between here and Gore, and you've got a very tough loop out the back of Riversdale to contend with before you finish back in Gore. This stage can be broken into three parts, crosswinds for the first 50 kilometres, headwind and hills for the middle part, and then crosstail winds for the last 50 kilometres. I don't think you can win the tour on this stage, but you can definitely lose it. Very tough way to get started. The organisers um, love putting in a lot of preems all the way through, so the sprinters are all go from the start, and that's when the brakes go, and that's when the field splits. So this stage is going to be all guns blazing right from where go. There are a lot of sprints. You've got to be near the front, because as soon as you turn out of that industrial zone, we're in quiet roads, and we get hit by crosswinds from the left. 
From there, usually the field splits into echelons and only the strongest survive in echelons. There are a number of stages in this year's race which you would call key GC stages for the guys who are contending to win the race. This first stage is definitely one of them. If they can get through this stage in one piece and, uh, and not too far down in time, then they'll be pretty well placed. So here we are in the neutral section of Invercargill here on stage one past New River School, Doug. The big field, fantastic looking day for it. Fantastic conditions. There's a lot of riders would have woken up this morning, Julian, and gone, thank goodness for that. It's great to see the support from all the schools. It is a major feature of the SBS Tour of Southland. Southland Girls High School is where they drop the flag here for 167 kilometres and straight into it with the early sprints here. Only the first few kilometres, Doug, a tour which is well known for its sprints. This start is very, very fast, and you can see here we've already got a couple of riders. That looks like Carl Murray off the front already. We're looking at the back of the peloton here, Julian, and you can see the speed that they're going already. We've got a left hand and a right hand coming up, and it is very, very tricky. You're right, the big figure of Carl Murray. He's been down here a number of times over the years and has experienced the green jersey, and this is the sort of thing he'll do day in and day out, going off the front, searching out those early sprints. Yeah, it's great to see. This is the kind of aggressive starts you see constantly in the Tour of Southland. And you can see here the riders are going to have a hard right-hander into Oda Puny Avenue. And from here, it's just all going to split apart. The young man there from South Shore, and that has now got himself onto the wheel of the big man. He's been in the green jersey, but here we go with Zinovich and co trying to get themselves into the mix as well, Doug. Yeah, here we can see some of the sprinters who fancy themselves trying to win some of these points. Remember, Julian, they're not only points for first and second, they go back further than that. You can see there's the first prem there on the road, but uh, this start is very, very quick, and with Carl Murray being away, it's going to be interesting. So some 10k on the outskirts of Invercargill now into it and here's the man in the yellow jersey, Joe Cooper. And they're just keeping an eye on proceedings but they've let this man disappear, Doug. Roman Van Uden, the former winner of the green jersey. Yes, Roman Van Uden has really signalled his intentions right from the word go coming into um, Odepuni Avenue. You can see some action now starting to happen from the peloton and Roman Van Uden is really on the attack very early on. Here's some counter attacks coming. This looks like Gordon McCauley from the Barry Stewart team and uh, this is very characteristic of Gordon of course. Absolutely, Doug. No surprises there to see if there's a break happening. You can just about count, out, count on him to be the man out in front. Of course, a former two-time winner of this tour. But the rest of the field quite content just to follow the wheels at this point in time. Yes, there'll be some anxiety sort of being relieved a wee bit with the conditions this morning. You can see now out on the road, we're uh, panning across here again to Roman Van Uden. He's got quite a good gap and uh, he's well forward. He's having a wee peek behind, see who's reacting. This is the kind of move that these guys like. Attack, see who comes across and who's coming across here? Gordon McCauley. Yeah, the former national time trial champion. Of course, he's been a medalist at the Commonwealth Games in the time trial as well. So he'd be quite content just to get out there and push the big gears. As you can see him slogging along there in the 53-11 as he tries to get himself across here towards Woodlands. Yeah, this is the kind of guy you love to see coming across to a break because you know he's going to be eager to work. He loves breakaways. He loves trying to get away as well. But uh, Gordon's got a bit of work to go before he can catch up to Roman Van Uden. And he's having a look around and see now if anyone else is counter-attacking. So in the space of a couple kilometres here, they've started to reel back in these boys. And here are nine riders, though, at Morton Mains, who have started to open a decent sort of a gap on the field. That's happened very quickly, Doug, already out to a minute and a half. Yeah, this is the kind of thing you expect to see in the um, in the major stage races around. There's a group gone away. You can see here that the uh, peloton, we're back at the front of the group now, just having to tempo along. And uh, we've got a group of nine riders away at the front of this group. Here's the Genesis Wealth team. They're just tempoing the front, trying to control the bunch so that the chase doesn't get too organised. We've got the Ascot uh, Kia Motors team here involved with taking the drink at the moment in the red colours. Calder Stewart also in the uh, lead group of riders here with one of the former Junior Worlds representatives here in the mix with him and that would be Hamish Ruiz. As they come back through here, you can see the main peloton though, more than quite content just to stay in single file here and just tick along at a tempo. This is right, what often happens in these stage races, if you get a member of each of the major teams represented in the break, the onus is on the rest of the teams who aren't represented to chase. Now you can see here we're back at the front of the race. Um, there's some positioning going on here for the Prems coming into Edendale. But it's going to be very interesting to see what the mood of the chasing bunch is. We've got a good breakaway here, they're quite organised.
And I think the conditions will play a part here today as well, Doug, because traditionally we've seen those crosswinds, which has made life difficult for both the break and the chasing bunch. But here today, perfect conditions, great for the kids to come back out here. Edendale, Wyndham area now as the main peloton comes on through. They're now sitting at just over two minutes over race radio. Yeah, we can see here the conditions are very pleasant. You can see the riders all stretched out in behind each other, which suggests the wind is uh, from the front. But you can see they're really taking care of their nutrition. They're making sure they're drinking and eating, and they're also having a good look around to see what's going on behind. There's uh, one of the riders there wiping his hands on his shorts. But this is a very organised breakaway. Absolutely, it's got some big hitters and particularly the teams I should say, the big hitting teams so that's going to change the mood back in that main field there because they won't be chasing their own top team members here as we look back to it again just back to the tempo here and it's still sitting at around that two and a half minute mark and it's uh, starting to open up a bit here in the good conditions. Yeah this is very controlled here from the uh, the Genesis Wealth Advisors team. They've got a, a, a rider away in the break, Taylor Gunman, number 52 and you can see here that they're just tempoing back to the front break again, they're right rolling around nicely, swapping off. You can see all the support vehicles in behind uh, as well. There's the tour leader, Joe Cooper, having a bit of a chat, saying, hey, what's up? Who's chasing? Who's not? Uh, there's a lot of communication goes on in the bike races that you wouldn't actually know about, Julian. No, absolutely. And it's about being cool, calm and collected, isn't it, Doug? Over this sort of a distance here, you can't always be off the front there. You've got some decisions to make and you've got to make them pretty quickly and hence why they've got some good teammates around them here. And again, as we see here, they just continue just to tempo it along here, still hovering around close to three minutes now as they start to approach towards Matara and, that's, and into the hills. This is a very organised ride here from the uh, Genesis team. You can see them riding at a nice tempo. So the first of the hill climbs here today as we make our way out of Matara. And of course they've categorised the hills this year for various points. Yeah, it's a, a standard system throughout stage races, Julian. Categorised through horse cat through to, to uh, cat four. And you can see some jostling for position now coming up for the first of these hill climbs. Yeah, the Ascot man Lachlan Norris from Australia making a bit of a, a surge to the line here. But here goes Grayson Napier in his first ever tour. Has made a bit of a surge off the front and is opening a decent gap here. And looks like he'll take out maximum points here on the cat two climb. Yeah, this, this front group is going to split up a wee bit over these climbs and you can see the riders all fighting now to catch this young rider that's away up the road. But uh, it'll be interesting to see whether the front breakaway group comes back together after this climb. They look like number 16 there from Calder Stewart, Shrewers. And that will manage to pick him up some points for himself there. But here's the man here that was uh, proving too strong in the end, gives us a bit of a wave. It'll be interesting to see how he performs over the upcoming climbs. Yes, you can see now back at the front uh, of the peloton again, the chase is pretty sedentary. There's obviously not a lot of panic going through. Uh, the riders at the front, you can see still the Genesis team at the front. It's an all Aussie affair, the front of the group. So here's the main peloton dropping down Charlton Hill towards a gore region here with the upcoming few more sprints through the main uh, streets. But of course, three minute gap here still to this lead group of nine riders, Doug. Yes, there's... there's Nine rider group has worked very well. They've obviously come back together over the top of that preem, uh, over Waimumu and then into Gore. It's a very, very quick um, descent into Gore. You can see once again all the school kids are out and it'll be interesting to see what happens up this next week climb. So it's Roman Van Uden there in the power net colours. That's the blue colours there towards the front here. He's been tracking along, picking up a number of points here to try and secure himself the Harcourt sprint ace as the day has proceeded here. So as we saw earlier, they've split themselves up as three or four just quite content to take out the sprints. Yeah, this often, often happens with these breakaway groups in, in the Tour of Southland. There's a bit of jostling goes on. There's a lot of energy you've got to expend as you go through. And a lot of these riders aren't really that keen to uh, work too much in order to try and take the primes and take the hill climb. So it disrupts the flow of the front group. So those interested in the sprint here are lining themselves up. It's Van Uden and the young man from Australia, Craig Evers. It's up along the front of it here as our camera just follows through from the back here for safety reasons as they spread themselves across the road here into Gore. So Van Uden's continued on after the sprint here, is now going to try out his climbing legs, uh, Doug, on the traditional Broughton Street climb. Yes, Broughton Street's pretty famous climb in the Tour of South, and it provides a bit of a springboard off, and you can see here Roman Van Uden starting to dig in now. But here comes Grayson Napier, he's already taken out the first hill climb of the day, and he's obviously keen to try and get himself into that Jesco Hydraulics King of the Mountains, as he gets on to the wheel of Van Uden. Can he come off it would be the name of the game, and it looks like here he is once again, gives a bit of a kick. Van Uden decides he'll sit up, and that's going to be the way they'll come across the line. 
Yeah, there he is, Grayson Napier from the Creation Signs L and M Group Racing Team. Uh, they're having a good tour this year. It's nice to see these guys out on the front. He's a pretty chirpy sort of boy, this. be interesting to see whether he's like this at the end of the stage. Absolutely. A lot of climbing to happen over the week here. It's going to be a hard jersey to try and hold on to with the different classifications these days and, of course, with Bluff Hill tomorrow. And the pace back in the front peloton's reasonably sedate. Matthew Marshall here racing for the Pure South team this year. Matthew's a local boy, races out of a tower tower. Spends a lot of time in Australia nowadays, of course, Julian, but the peloton's looking pretty relaxed. Absolutely. You can see the stature of the guys there on top of the handlebars just cruising through as we see a number of the teams just coming on through and getting a bit of a feed and getting prepared here as they hit the 100k mark, still at three minutes behind the main lead group. So with Gore 30k behind this lead group of nine riders and only 40k to the finish, Doug, they're still looking pretty good, but the time is coming down with Race Radio now suggesting only two minutes back to the peloton. Yeah, it's at this point in the race, Julian, where there's a bit of fatigue starting to set in with this front group. They've been away for a long time now. It's going to be important that they try and stay organised. And uh, it really dictates things as to how it's all going to pan out for the finish, because we are approaching the finish now. So... Uh, we're going to have to see some more organisation from that front group. And speaking of organisation, here's the Genesis team towards the front. They've also got an H&J's Outdoor World Advantage Plus team member in the green colours. And there's the man in yellow just uh, getting the troops, just stirring them along to make sure they keep things under control. They'll know full well the sorts of things they need to do to try and shut this down. Yeah, the Genesis Wealth team have been uh, one of the top teams in Australia. You can see there the 10k to go board, so there's not a lot of urgency in this front group at the moment, and they're going to really have to get things organised. And here goes Van Uden, the power net man has decided with 10k to go, it's time to try out, see what he's like at time trialling here as he tries to open a gap, and look at the reaction. Well, basically there is none here amongst these lead guys. I think some of these guys have ridden themselves out on the road, and they're probably just happy at this point in time to follow wheels round, and are hoping to get to the stage finish before getting caught by the main chasing peloton, but Roman Van Uden, he's gone. It's opening up to 10 seconds over the radio here. He's got 10k. It's a big ask to try and hold out that group. And also here we hear the time coming through. Now the main peloton shutting it down to just over a minute to go here. The gap between them and that lead group of nine riders. As we see the radio sport team now starting to get into the mix at the front of the field. Yes, we're starting to see some organisation here. There's Matt Zinovich at the front. Once again, we're back to this front group with the, rem with the chasing group for Roman Van Uden. But uh, these guys have probably left their run a bit late. Roman Van Uden has definitely escaped. It's Norris sitting on the back there in the Ascot colours here. Potentially, if these guys can hold the field out, Doug, here, there's about four of them that potentially could take out not only the stage, but put themselves into yellow after the close finish in yesterday's time trial. You've got to hand it to Roman Van Uden. Here we are back at the main peloton, but Roman Van Uden is soloing away. He's tried to go for the prams. He's tried to go for the hill climbs. His intention is very, very clear in this first stage of the SBS Tour of Southland. Team Space just hiding away into the middle of the field. One of the new teams involved in the tour this year. But this is the man they're trying to chase down to take the victory, to take the stage one here into Gore, 167 kilometres. And he's still looking pretty strong there, Doug, as he settles into a decent tempo. Yeah, he'll be wanting to get himself into a good tempo. He's probably realised now that he's committed. He's committed all his energies into getting away. And you can see him now going into a bit more of an aerodynamic position. He's got his hands on top of the hoods there trying to get as aerodynamic as possible. But what is going on behind him will be of utmost interest to this man. What's the reaction back here? Still very quiet amongst these guys here. They're doing the maths, trying to work out who's going to try and shut it down, but not a lot of team effort amongst them. Yes, Roman Van Uden has, has really, really named down the gauntlet, and it's up to this chasing group here in order to uh, to get him back. And by looking round, like we see with uh, the young rider here at the back, number 16, uh, Hamish Schroes, they're not going to catch Roman Van Uden with 5Ks to go looking behind them. No, 5,000 metres, and this man here is absolutely committed to it there, but the rest of that field, they'll be starting to look over their shoulders and no doubt can see the main peloton starting to bear down on them to the, into the fast finish into Gore. But this man here, he's decided it's time to go. He's going to give it everything here. It's going to be a do-or-die effort. Yes, Roman Van Uden, of course, he's got a track background, so it's not an unusual thing for him to be putting in a solid effort over a shorter amount of time. However, today's stage, having accumulated up, 
up on him, this man's really digging deep and he will be at the bottom of the uh, reserves pile, I would say, and he is just hanging on. And let's not forget, of course, Doug Powernet been well performed over the years. Two years ago, of course, they took it out and that's there with young Josh Atkins and that's so they know how to perform. They know these roads well and they would have looked at those maps closely to make the moves. Here, here we are back at the um, remainder of that front group and although there's some organisation going on now, uh, they may have left this too late. Yeah, Morgan Smith coming on through as well and amongst the mix there, he's the man from the team with Gordon McCauley but they've looked, they've opened a huge gap on them all right here and no one seems to be able to shut it down just yet, Doug. Yes, this is, uh, this is a pretty pivotal point. You can see them now starting to get a wee bit more organised. There's Daniel Barry. Uh, starting to come through for the Kia Motors squad, the Ascot Park Hotel Kia Motors squad, but there's a bit of urgency that could have happened a couple of kilometres ago, Julian, I think they may have left their run a bit late. Yeah, as Murray is, comes through for them, Daniel Barry, I should say, onto the front here. He starts to pick the pace up. He's a man potentially could take out the yellow jersey here. So he knows he's a lot on the line, not only as an individual, but for his team here as well. As they now only have two or three of them that seem to be have the legs left on them. As you said, there's a bit of cramp when it's starting to happen here with the King of the Mountains. Yes, this is young Grayson Napier. He's clutching a, a hamstring with the looks of things. He looks like uh, the fatigue of this stage is starting to catch up. But there you see at number 34, uh, Lachlan Norris, the Melbourne rider, sorry. He is a well-experienced bike racer, has been around all over the world, and he is really throwing down everything in this group now and, and is trying to get away on his own. It's commitment plus now from this chase group here. As we've said, that's not only the stage victory here, it's potential of taking that yellow jersey amongst them, and they're giving it absolutely everything. As they look over their shoulders, they can see now that the vehicles have been moved out and in the distance there, only at about 30 seconds, hence the vehicles disappearing, is the chasing peloton. This is a really really desperate position to be in in a breakaway formation, Julian. You know you've got the peloton breathing down, you know they've had some organised chasing going on, there'll be a number of teams at the front of that peloton chasing this group. This group really has to commit themselves, you can see them peeling off the back already down the road and uh, goodness me, who's, who's going to take this out? And let's not forget of course these guys have been on the front for about 130k of this particular stage here so she's a big effort here on day one of this SBS tour as we see the surge going off the front here and it's again trying to get away as they can see the main peloton but we're here, we've got the camera on this guy here but we know full well only about 15 seconds ahead is this man here, number 24, Roman Van Uden. Here he is, Roman Van Uden. He's been on the attack all day and he's going to stay away to win this stage in the 2013 SBS Tour of Southland. An outstanding victory, but only moments behind comes the main peloton, Cam Kowalski in there, Sir of Switzerland as well. But now the calculators will be out, Doug, as they decide on who is going to take away the yellow jersey here on day one of this SBS Tour. We'll definitely try and defend the yellow with, uh, with a bit of pride and um, it might change our results later in the week but um, hey, we've got the yellow for one day at least. Even with the time bonuses on the road today and the stage victory, Roman Van Uden couldn't quite secure the yellow jersey and it's local man Cameron Kowalski after a good performance in the time trial yesterday that will take it into day two by one second. Roman Van Uden will be wearing the green in the Harcourt Sprint Ace, while Grayson Napier will be wearing the Jesco Hydraulics King of the Mountains. Follow the 2013 SBS Bank Tour of Southland all week with full results, live roadside updates, photo and video galleries at tourofsouthland.com.